The bands that have mastered using tracks on stage do it in a way that you'll never actually know if they're using tracks. So what are the types of sounds, the types of things that they have in your tracks? We're gonna talk about and discuss exactly what those are today on today's episode of Behind the Space Bar. Hey everyone, this is Will. Welcome back to Behind the Space Bar. If this is your first time, then welcome. So glad you are here. This is the podcast for folks that are performing on stage with Ableton Live. Today's episode is going to be super short and sweet. Uh, I have six things I want to share with you that are examples of things you can use tracks for, examples of types of sounds you can have in your tracks um, uh, that are not tracks themselves. And here's the reason why I want to do this episode. Uh, I've had probably two or three people in the past couple months comment on particular intro videos of tracks that have said, um, I hate when bands use tracks because it sounds manufactured and fake. Or they've said something like, um, you know, when bands use tracks, it's, it's stuffy and it's commercialized and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, those, those comments are interesting because I've seen bands that are, uh, you know, more acoustic based, kind of folky based that use tracks that have different things in their tracks than bands that are like electronic based. I've seen EDM acts that are very heavy on tracks and I've seen rock bands that are heavy on tracks and I've seen acoustic based bands that are heavy on tracks and all three of them sound different. So how can they sound commercialized? And at the heart of what they're saying is um, they're sitting in an environment, they're hearing a band use tracks in a way that's, that's uh, maybe not the best possible way. Now context is everything. I've preached this many, many times before that, again, if you go to see a jazz trio and you suddenly hear a full-size band, full-size orchestra playing, you're gonna go, something's not right here. But if you walk into a small club with an artist with amazing vocals that has a very electronic, uh, you know, kind of heavy influence, EDM style music, and you hear a lot of tracks, you're not gonna say, man, that show sucked. You're gonna go, man, that artist was incredible. Uh, it's all about context, right? We've talked about that many, many times before, but something that rang true about those comments that those folks had left was, again, just the idea that um, what does tracks even mean? It's, it's kind of like an existential question, but what are even tracks? Like, what are the things that are in tracks? And it's all dependent on different s situations and scenarios. And it took me back to the idea that, uh, again, we talked about a couple weeks ago, how to use tracks on stage without cheating, without feeling like a fraud. And a lot of times people hear tracks, backing tracks, and they think what's happening is everyone on stage is faking it and the sounds that they hear are coming from the, the tracks, right? And that's simply not true. In some scenarios, yes, but it's simply not true. The, the artist you see on stage is likely singing um, the majority of the show, if not all of it. It's not tracked vocals. Just because you saw that one clip of Ash Ashley Simpson on stage doesn't mean, uh, on SNL, doesn't mean that every single pop act that you see is faking a lot of them are, but not every single one that you see is faking uh, singing on stage. So I got six things really quickly that I wanna share uh, as potential ideas of things you could put into tracks that are not tracks or you wouldn't consider to be tracks uh, that will allow you to uh, do the goal of what I think the goal of good production is. Good production is not seen, it's felt. Good production is not noticed, it's an emotion, it's a feeling. So you walk away from a show um, not going, ah, that, that band used a lot of tracks in it, but you walk away from that show going, man, what a really cool moment. Like that band sounded incredible. And it's because they used elements of tracks and different things to really enhance their show. I will warn you up front, this could be an even better tutorial if I had examples of each of these things, but I wanted to get this content out as an encouragement. And here's what I need from you. If you're watching on YouTube and you go, Will, this is, this is great, I love this idea. Can you give me examples, audio examples of each of these or show us how to do this in Ableton? Uh, if I get enough people commenting, which is like one or two, if a couple of you comment and go, Will, this is great, show us how to do this in Ableton, um, then we'll do a follow-up tutorial on this, right? So instead of just a podcast episode, we'll dive deep into this. So we've got six things. I wanna run through these really, really quickly to share examples of things that are not tracks, what we consider tracks that you could use and put into tracks to be successful. Number one, this sounds like a cheat, but it really isn't click and guide. And you go, well, Will, don't you have to have click and guide to use tracks? Yes, but you don't have to have tracks to use click and guide. And what I mean by that is if your band is playing with click and guide, you can then use time code, you can use MIDI to control and change presets on your keyboards, on your guitar pedals, on your amp modelers, amp simulators. Um, you can send time code to your lighting console to control video to keep it perfectly in sync. You can send MIDI notes to a teleprompter solution. Um, you could do so many things that don't require the audience hearing anything. Uh, you can have guide cues, slate tracks, cue tracks in your ears that remind you of 
verse coming up, remind you of lyrics going into a particular situation, remind you have like stage direction notes to say, uh, you know, center stage, stand over here, pyro's coming up, don't step back too far or your butt will be on fire. Uh, little things like that that are in your ears that the audience will never, never hear. Now, if you're listening to this and you've never used tracks on stage or you're just brand new to this, you may go, yeah, Will, but using a click is restrictive. We can't flow, we can't change tempo. Well, yeah, you can. You just program that into the click and say, this verse is going to be a different tempo than that verse. You can be as free and you can have as much flexibility. Your tempo can flow just as much when you're playing with click as without it. It's just when you're playing with click, you're choosing and being intentional to flow as opposed to just flowing because you can't play in time. Okay, so number one, click and guide only. A lot of really cool stuff we can do with that and it has no sounds in, at whatsoever. Number two, enhance thematic moments. What I mean by that is um, you have moments of your show where uh, maybe the lights are gonna dim down and it's a, it's, it's a breakup song, right? And you want this really emotional part of the song where their life was in despair and everything was awful until they met this person that they complete them. Their, their life is whole now. But in this really dark moment, we wanna enhance this thematic moment of the show. So we can use click and guide play along with that, not to it, but with it, so that we can track light so that tracks fade to center stage. We can use a, a guide cue that tells the artist to stand center stage. Um, all the lights come down except for this one spotlight on the person to enhance the fact that they're all alone in complete despair there. But as that's happening, then, and I'm kind of cheating to get ahead to some of these other ones, as that's happening, we can use effects to, to kind of uh, make that a really big moment, right? We can use a cymbal swell to swell down to that. Uh, we can use white noise and chaos and chaos and then slowly drop it to nothing to where it sounds like science, silence to enhance that thematic moment. A, a perfect example that uh, I've used multiple times before, but one that I thought of preparing this episode, um, years and years ago would have been 2013, I believe. I was in Florida on staff at a church there. We did a big Christmas thing at the, uh, whatever the hockey arena there is that the hockey team plays in Atlanta. 30,000 people, every campus of our church was there. It was massive. And we had a moment where we wanted um, some drummers to come out and play, uh, I guess, like marching tom drums, whatever it would be called. It wasn't bass drums, but they're kind of wearing it. And we want them to do hits with the drums. Well, we didn't mic the drummers up. They were certainly playing and they were actually playing their part. But what we did is we tracked some drums beforehand, uh, playing that part. And then I actually went in with uh, uh, some sine waves and basically made some hits so that as they hit, there was this more emotional kind of impact happening. Um, you could say, well, Will, that's faking it. Okay, but were they playing on stage? Yes, they were. Were there also things enhancing what they were doing? Well, yes, they were. Okay, so you wouldn't walk away from that and go, I didn't like that part where they were using tracks. You couldn't tell we were using tracks in that moment because what was happening in the tracks, the goal was to enhance this thematic moment of the song to enhance the instruments that were on stage, right? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Number three, sound effects. So again, this kind of ties into number two, but um, uh, you know, glass breaking, a, a siren happening. Uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of examples of sound effects. I think we've all know what sound effects are, but if you're using click and guide live, um, uh, you don't even have to necessarily have click and guide to have sound effects. You could have like a, a drum pad or something that has those programmed in, but using sound effects will add this other emotional layer um, that instead of standing on stage and breaking glass and micing it up and making sure people don't get cut, just have that noise, that sound effect um, uh, in the tracks. Particularly if you're doing a lot of production with a lot of sound effects um, uh, in the studio, you can literally just render those out and have those in the tracks uh, uh, when you perform live. Um, and it's again gonna help create, going back to number two, a really cool thematic moment. One final thing I'll throw in here that I didn't plan on throwing in, if the system that you're using live happens to be in stereo, um, you can do some really cool things with sound effects to enhance thematic moments by using panning, right? You can get kind of chaotic by having it like ping pong back and forth, or you could do a really cool kind of pan with like white noise or something from the left to right field of the speakers. And maybe not everyone hears that, but the people that are close enough to a speaker, they'll hear something happening. And it's like a, a, a subtle, cue to um, um, just our subconscious that like, oh, pay attention, something's happening here. And again, we can use those things to either make a big impact or take chaos and then drop it to pure silence. And it's gonna make that silence feel a lot bigger because it was big and it went to softer. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, number four, voiceovers. This is something I see um, a lot happen again, again, to kind of enhance that thematic moment. 
but uh, you're, you're doing a song about a particular subject. You're doing a song responding to um, uh, something that happened in the news. An artist wrote a song about something that they went through that's public, that people know about. Um, maybe it's a response to people you know, talking trash about them and they can play clips of news shows where people said, oh, that Will Dog, he's a real you know, a-hole. I hate that guy, he's a real jerk. And then I write some song about rising above the noise, right? Well, a great way to enhance the thematic moment and the impact of that song is to start with all those clips, right? If, if I was a real YouTuber, I could do a compilation of all the negative comments on YouTube videos and then do a video about how we shouldn't have negative comments or whatever. But that video would have more impact by showing you that actually happened, right? Uh, so having voiceovers is a great way, either at the beginning of a song or in the middle of a song, to again, take something from just being a song to, to being an experience, right? And I think that's why I love this technology. I don't love this technology because you can stand on stage and play with a click and play with tracks. Like who, who cares? Okay, Lottie freaking Doc, great. But I love this technology because it's a way to enhance our storytelling and it's a way to um, uh, drive our point home. And every single one of you watching and listening to this has a story that you wanna tell. You wanna tell a story about yourself, about something that's happened to you, to someone else. Um, you wanna share these songs that you wrote, uh, that you went into the studio and recorded and poured your soul into, and you wanna take those onto the stage to, to really tell that story uh, in a very uh, vulnerable, impactful, truthful way. Tracks are what allow you to help you do that. Using voiceover sound effects. And again, if we're using time code with this, we can tie that into a video of the actual clips of it that are perfectly in timed. The hits happen at the right time. And again, those are shows where people will walk away from and they're not gonna go, I hate that that band uses tracks on stage. They're gonna walk away maybe with tears in their eyes or uh, encouragement in their heart and, and go, man, that was like a really impactful show. And it's gonna have more impact with those extra elements than if it was just music. Now, before I get to number four and number five, I wanna encourage you, if, if you're just starting your journey of using tracks, you wanna learn how to best use tracks on stage, uh, then head to from studio to stage.com slash template. Two things you're gonna get when you go there. One, you're gonna get my free track template, which is I've gone through, I've uh, spent years and years trying to find the best possible way to run tracks on stage with Ableton Live. Uh, and I've created a template that's gonna allow you to get uh, up and running as quickly as possible to do that. Um, knowing how to run tracks in Ableton Live is a completely different process than using Ableton Live for live looping, which is different than recording, which is different than producing music. So even if you're an expert in Ableton Live and those things, you've gotta know how to use live for running tracks. And you're gonna learn how to do that the best possible way by going to from studio stage.com slash template getting my free track template instead of doing the work to try to figure it out yourself still my ideas still my process and you can apply that but you're not left alone to figure it out on your own you'll also get access to a six-day email course so i'll email you every single day showing you exactly how to use that template with your content so if you want to learn how to use tracks on stage again in a way that people don't notice the people walk away and go wow, that was an amazing, um, uh, amazing, just kind of emotional moment. I'm not sure exactly what I experienced there. Then the best way to get started is from studio to stage.com slash template. Okay, number five, um, a way that we can, uh, you know, do things with tracks that aren't actually tracks is enhance instruments on stage. Um, the first thing that popped into my mind when I was preparing for this episode was sub bass, right? You've got a bass player and maybe in the first chorus, everything drops down. We wanna make a bigger impact on the course. Certainly the bass player could, could just hit whole notes and hopefully they, their bass sustains enough that it's gonna have an impact. They could certainly have a Moog on stage that they could play sub bass with. But if you can't afford the Moog, you don't wanna afford an extra input, you don't want to haul that around or your bass player doesn't really play keys and that just happened in the studio, then a great way to impact that is to have sub bass. Again, is the bass player faking? No, they're not faking. They're playing those notes on stage. They're just using something to help impact that. Uh, the example I shared before of drummers on stage, when they hit, there's pre-recorded drums uh, to impact those, those moments. There's maybe cymbal swells to impact those moments. Um, there's like a sub bass hit or drop, something like that. Um, um, those are things that are gonna help impact moments and enhance instruments on stage. I shared this in that episode uh, where we talked about not cheating with tracks on stage. And I said another great example is like a drummer on stage uh, using a shaker, using a tambourine. 
and maybe you know uh, they're just playing shaker and you could use the overhead drum mics to to kind of mic that but maybe a better way for that to translate is to have it in the tracks and you could say well, are they faking well they're playing it on stage but it also just happens to be in the tracks to enhance it um, you could also have a situation where if maybe you only have one guitar player and they go to do a solo maybe in that section uh, you have some pre-tracked rhythm guitar to help fill out those moments now i would certainly say do not have the lead guitar part tracked and have the rhythm guitar player just play rhythm guitar but you could certainly have rhythm guitar pre-tracked it's just in that moment it's tucked down in the mix the lead guitar player is playing and the band is still going to sound full and complete even when they they pop up to play lead and they're no longer playing rhythm so using things in the tracks using the tracks to enhance instruments on stage definitely is not cheating and it just adds to that additional emotional impact which is great number six Final thing here, this is maybe the most obvious, and this is the thing that, again, even within this, you've gotta kind of balance the line of what you put into here, but I said aux sound. So first thing I thought of, obviously in this category is like pad stuff. So if you've got um, a drummer, a bassist, a guitar player on stage, and maybe one of them is the lead vocalist, or maybe we have an additional person that's, that's singing lead, there's gonna be a lot of songs where there's probably some keys parts. If there is a piano part, um, that's a very, noticeable instrument anyone that 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 um, has ever you know has hearing of any sort has ever heard a song ever is going to hear a piano part and know that's a piano part and so that's something that as soon as our ear hears that we're going to visually look for the cue to see someone playing piano now again this is up to you you could have just a keyboard on stage and the person could fake play the part they should probably actually play the part the piano part but a pad an ambient pad, for example, is something that when you hear, unless you actually know music really well, you're not gonna know what that is. You're just gonna know that's that sound that they use in records, right? That's just, it's part of the song. And so that's something you could certainly have in the tracks with like a trio on stage, that the bassist is surely playing, the guitar player is surely playing, the drummer is surely playing, the lead vocalist is surely singing, but you have the, the pad, kind of ambient pad thing happening. They're just kind of fill out the sound to add some extra um, elements, right? Uh, I have BGVs listed here. Again, this one you have to use tastefully and you have to use in just the right spots. Um, you can certainly overdo it to where there's like one person singing and then you get into the chorus and suddenly there's like five part harmony happening. Five part harmony, I don't even know how that works, but lots of parts happening, right? Uh, at once and you go, there's just one person singing here. How is this, how is this the case? Like. Uh, that something is, is off here. But if you do it tastefully, if you do it at just the right spot, even if you have mics on stage for the rest of the, the musicians and members in the band, and when it comes to a BGV part, they're next to their mic and they're singing, but then maybe you also have BGVs and you, you know, tuck the live vocals down, the live BGVs there. Um, it can be done in a way that people that do not know will have no clue that there's things in the tracks. Most people that go to shows don't even know what tracks are, don't even, can't even spell Ableton. Most of us that use Ableton can't even spell Ableton. It's not a Belton, it's able to in. Just side note. We should do a tutorial on how to spell Ableton. Um, but actually that would be a fun tutorial. I'm gonna add that to the list. Uh, but using those aux sounds and, and done the right way at the, the right times and thinking about using sounds that people won't necessarily notice, again, will add to that emotional impact, will help uh, drive home the thematic moment uh, uh, in the song will help enhance the instruments on stage. And it's gonna make a real difference in telling your story live on stage. So if you're looking to use tracks on stage, it doesn't mean you have to sound commercialized. It doesn't mean you have to sound manufactured. It doesn't mean you have to fake it or sound like you're faking it on stage. You can do it in a way that it's gonna help enhance your story. It's gonna help drive your point home um, and share your story with the world. So I hope these tips were beneficial to you. Again, if you want more tips like this, if you're watching on YouTube, then hit subscribe, enable the bell icon. You'll see exactly when I post new content. Share new content every single week. And if you're listening on Spotify or um, on Apple Podcasts, do me a favor, follow, uh, subscribe to the show, leave a rating review if you'd like. And most importantly of all, no matter where you're watching, is share this with someone that you think would be impacted by it and would help them. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Keep up the good work and we'll see you on the next one, everybody. Take care, bye.